ambassador, um, we believe that leadership often comes through change or difficulty. So may you please describe the situation where you, or a moment that shaped you as a leader? I actually completely agree uh, with uh, that, uh, that sentiment. It's something that uh, our former president, uh, Bill Clinton, described uh, about himself. Bill Clinton, um, I remember, uh, very clearly uh, articulated, actually he said this when he was here uh, in South Africa back in 2005. Uh, he, he talked about some difficulties uh, that he was having in his own uh, journey, and he said that um, it was always uh, in, mo in moments of uh, absolute turbulence that he learned the most about himself uh, and uh, discovered uh, his capacity. So I agree with the sense that uh, leadership comes out of difficult moments. I can tell you uh, for myself that um, uh, one of the moments uh, in my life where uh, I appreciated uh, what it means to uh, stand up, uh, to find uh, one's voice, uh, and to um, uh, help to uh, pave the way uh, for others was when I was uh, very young. Uh, and my father, uh, at the time, was um, uh, working uh, several jobs. He was an immigrant uh, in, in New York, and when you're an immigrant in New York, you work several jobs. Uh, and um, uh, uh, my father's um, um, uh, place of work uh, went on strike. It was a strike that uh, my father supported, a strike uh, that he encouraged, but it was a very uh, difficult one. And I remember going out on the picket lines uh, with my father uh, in wintertime, it was incredibly uh, cold, but um, uh, the group of men, it was all, it was all men, the men who were, who were striking um, uh, were unwavering. Uh, they, they stuck together even uh, when things uh, became uh, incredibly challenging for them. And I remember the most challenging day uh, on the uh, picket line was an instance when there was a confrontation uh, with uh, police. Um, uh, the police officers uh, were, uh, were out there and they were giving a, a particularly difficult time to uh, the strikers that day. Uh, and they took one striker and they uh, pinned him uh, up against the wall. Uh, I was there, uh, uh, we, we would come after my mother got off work, she'd pick us up from school and we'd go to the picket line uh, where my dad was. So I was there uh, with my uh, three older brothers uh, and I saw uh, when the police officers put uh, that striker against the wall who had, as far as I could tell, done absolutely nothing. Uh, and without um, uh, a blink of an eye, uh, I saw uh, my father uh, forget about uh, his uh, four children uh, who were there uh, and um, immediately uh, moved uh, to assist and uh, give help to his brother uh, on the picket line. And there were probably six cops who descended on my father right away. Uh, he was put up uh, against the wall. He was jostled about. But the entire time, I saw him... Uh, never lose his, uh, his focus, even though I knew he had to be afraid, even though we were afraid and screaming and yelling. Uh, and the entire time I never heard my father um, uh, talk about himself or um, advocate for himself. He kept defending uh, his co-worker uh, and uh, the rights of that worker and why uh, that worker uh, should be uh, let alone since he had not been doing anything to uh, violate uh, any uh, principles. Uh, my father was taken uh, over uh, to the precinct uh, uh, that day, and, and, but later uh, released. Uh, and though we were, um, in general, terrified at the prospect, I was also uh, just quite elevated and inspired uh, by the moment. Uh, and I uh, recognized uh, right then and there that um, leadership uh, is not about um, uh, being a peacock, uh, but leadership is instead about um, being selfless uh, and reducing your own ego in, in, for a greater cause. So uh, that one moment uh, always for me um, uh, serves as my uh, definition of leadership. It's a moment when I was probably more scared than I've ever uh, been in my life, but it's also uh, what was a turning point for me, helping me to recognize that um, uh, when uh, times are the most difficult uh, is when you've got to dig in uh, and step forward on behalf of others. So Ambassador, besides um, difficulties like those, like the one you just mentioned right now, um, leadership can also come through learning and practice. Mm -hmm. So um, which habits have you practiced or do you continue to practice that help you grow in your own leadership journey? Um, uh, I, I think that um, uh, leadership uh, certainly comes out of um, a habit and, and work. It's, it's something that uh, is not happenstance. Uh, but um, something that's almost like a craft. 
that you uh, need to apply yourself to. Uh, I think that for me, uh, the habit that I find to be the most helpful is a self-interrogation that I do at the end of every single day. I've been doing it for as long as I can recall now, uh, where uh, I will always uh, pause uh, in the evening uh, and uh, look back on the day, what I hoped uh, to have accomplished, the encounters uh, that I had, uh, what um, information I imparted to others, what I myself learned, uh, and um, most importantly for me, um, uh, what mistakes I, I feel as if I had made during the course of the day. I have this terrible habit of uh, remembering uh, my own errors more than I remember accomplishments. I can tell you every single wrong answer I gave in the fourth grade when I raised, raised, raised my hand in class. I can't tell you any of the right answers that I got. Um, so at the end of every day, I'm always going back uh, and, and reflecting on uh, what I think I could have done better. So it's a kind of constant self-interrogation uh, that uh, is my habit and something that I find works for me. Uh, and I find that when I um, uh, do that, uh, it gives me the spark that I need to start the next day uh, with a much more forward-looking um, uh, stance. So, Ambassador, um, since you have this um, terrible habit of remembering um, your thoughts, um, can you describe moments in life where you tried something and you failed, and um, the possible lessons that you learned from those experiences of failing? You see, moments when I tried something and failed, it's a good thing my wife isn't here. She could give you 500 of those <laughs> examples. I, I, I think that um, uh, I've always learned uh, the most uh, through, uh, through failure. I was having a conversation with uh, some of my colleagues just yesterday morning, uh, and I was talking about where I was a decade uh, ago. Uh, I, was in the, I, I, I have a lot of experience in electoral politics, and. Uh, I was giving uh, my colleagues an example of an instance where I was at uh, my greatest uh, moment of dismay, and I remember being in a in a corner in a room uh, with my hands uh, cupped uh, around my head because it was clear to me that um, uh, a great mistake had been made, and uh, and my campaign was on the verge uh, of failure. But when I was uh, reflecting on it with my colleagues, I appreciated that. Uh, that moment of failure informed uh, so much success uh, that came later, and I have no regret uh, over um, uh, that moment where things uh, didn't go quite right. But I have to tell you that um, uh, there are so many uh, instances uh, in my journey where I challenged myself, where I pushed the envelope a little bit, uh, where I got out of my comfort zone, uh, and uh, as a result of that grew as a person. I, I remember. Uh, back in uh, 1997, uh, I took on a job uh, that I knew uh, I wasn't qualified for yet, uh, that I didn't have uh, the experience uh, for uh, as of yet, and I knew that it was a tremendous uh, stretch for me, and I also uh, knew, despite the, uh, the confidence that I was exuding when I um, uh, interviewed for the position, I knew uh, that uh, there would be many errors uh, along the way. Uh, uh, but I um, also knew that I had to do this in order uh, to um, get to the next uh, iteration of myself, the, the next level of expectation uh, that I had for myself. And true enough, uh, I took on uh, the task and um, failed pretty uh, royally. Uh, but um, uh, again, it was a, a moment where, uh, irrespective of the uh, overall uh, failure of that particular mission, um, I had moments where um, I, I realized my full self. I remember uh, one day, I, I, was, I was the youngest person uh, in this enterprise, and I remember one day um, uh, finding myself uh, in a room uh, with about 40 people who were all probably twice uh, my age, uh, and I heard uh, this voice. I heard somebody speaking to these uh, people, uh, and then I realized that it was me, and that I was uh, actually giving them um, uh, the directives uh, that they would go uh, and, ca and, and carry out. Uh, and I knew right then and there, that day, uh, in 1997, um, that uh, I was becoming someone else. Uh, and so I, I embraced that uh, failure heartily. Um, so Ambassador Gaspard, at ALA, for example, and with most leaders or institutions, they always hold a certain set of values that often guide their decisions and actions in life. So what core cool values do you hold? that have helped you in life in making decisions and actions? You know, um, I think that uh, uh, for me, um, uh, the values uh, that have uh, guided 
um, my public uh, decisions uh, and uh, my internal compass. Um, I, I learned all of them uh, when I was in um, a Sunday school as a child. Uh, and uh, uh, I remember uh, the, my first moment of, of really being politicized uh, was when I heard the Sermon on the Mount uh, and when I learned uh, the Beatitudes uh, and um, uh, that uh, kind of, uh, at, the, at the moment when I was very young, became a, a guiding uh, philosophy uh, for me uh, and that continues uh, to be uh, my, my touchstone. Um, uh, there's uh, something uh, about uh, that lesson that imparts a certain uh, humility. Uh, uh, it's humility mixed uh, with uh, profound aspiration um, that uh, I find uh, I draw strength from uh, and whenever uh, I feel uh, particularly low. So lastly, Ambassador, um, any words you'd like all young leaders to think about? Anything you'd like to share? Any words that I think young leaders uh, should, should think about? Yeah, just only one, uh, the word why. Uh, I think that um, that is the single most important word in the English language. Uh, and you cannot um, uh, give proper leadership uh, guidance uh, to anyone else uh, if you are not uh, in the constant habit of asking the world uh, why. Why did this happen? Uh, why are things uh, this way? Um, uh, and not accepting uh, the world uh, as uh, uh, presented to you or the rules as presented to you or anyone else's, um, uh, any, anyone else's prescription, but constantly, constantly uh, interrogating uh, the world. So I think that is the most important word. Uh, and if a leader uh, is not asking uh, that word every day, not only of the world, but of themselves as well, uh, then uh, they really have uh, no value at the table. Once again, thank you for coming through, Ms. Ambassador. Thank you.